वेलकम बैक वी आर डिस्कसिंग द लेसन बायोलॉजिकल क्लासिफिकेशन इन द प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट किंगडम मोनेरा व्हिच इज द बैक्टीरियल फैमिली टुडे वी विल डिस्कस द किंगडम प्रोटिस्टा किंगडम फंजाई एंड वी विल आल्सो बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट वायरसेस वायरोइड्स प्रियोंस एंड लाइकेंस सो किंगडम प्रोटिस्टा दे आल्सो contain unicellular organisms these are unicellular but they are different from the bacteria in the sense that they are eukaryotes so in the protista consists of unicellular eukaryotic organisms these are mostly microscopic in nature where this present they are mostly aquatic they could be present both in fresh water as well as the seas the marine water their mode of nutrition some forms are autotrophic and while others are heterotrophic in heterotrophic nutrition they exhibit parasitic nutrition holozoic nutrition as well as saprotrophic nutrition in parasitic nutrition these organisms are present either on the animals or mostly inside the body of the host animal holozoic nutrition we can find it in amoeba paramecium etc whereas in saprotrophic mode of nutrition these organisms directly obtain the nutrients from dead and decomposing organic materials since these are present in water they need some kind of locomotory organs so they have got special locomotory organs they may have cilia flagellum or in the case of amoeba pseudopodia so these they use for mostly locomotion and sometimes even for capturing the food all this we will come across when we discuss in detail mostly they reproduce by asexual method sometimes they also go for production of spores asexual reproduction is by means of fission sexual reproduction is completely absent these are the general features of kingdom protista the kingdom protista is further classified into five phylums you have the hierarchy of classification kingdom phylum class order so within kingdom protista it is further organized into phylums it is what we will discuss in detail so the five phylums are chrysophyta then we have the dinoflagellates dinoflagellate we have the euglenoids euglenophyta have the slime molds and we have the protozoans number 1 phylum chrysophyta the word chryso refers to golden so most of this organisms they have a golden color chrysophyta commonly includes the diatoms and the desmids which are mostly aquatic that is marine 
most of them they live in either fresh water or salt water these are autotrophic they have pigments present in them which they can use to trap the sunlight and they can use it to prepare their own food therefore the diatoms they are the primary producers in the seas and water bodies they prepare the food for all the organisms these can be found floating on the surface of the water we call them as planktons color as i already told you they are golden or brown in color and they mostly do not have any flagella flagellum is absent the unique feature of chrysophyta is that their body is in the form of a soap box so it seems to be having two cup shaped halves and both of them fit right into each other the cell wall of diatoms and desmids is siliceous it is made up of silica which makes it very tough and rigid it is protective in nature when these diatoms they die all this settle at the bottom of the ocean because of the silica present in the cell wall these are literally indestructible this is what is called as diatomaceous earth that is the remains of the dead diatoms this diatomaceous earth because of its porous nature is very important it is used for industrial scrubbers it is also used in filtration of oils and syrups so they have got some uses and they reproduce asexually that is by binary fission they when they mature they just split and produce two cells so asexual reproduction is seen in chrysophyta example diatoms and desmids moving on to the next phylum that is dinoflagellates as the word itself suggests dinoflagellates these are organisms that contain two flagellum the flagellum one could be longitudinal and there could be horizontal these are also mostly photosynthetic they can prepare their own food most of them are surrounded by thick plates in the cell wall there are cellulosic plates instead of silica that is seen in diatoms so cellulosic cell plates are seen which offer them protection they are known to show bioluminescence meaning they can emit their own light fire plants that's another name for these dinoflagellates they reproduce asexually by binary fission and the dna even though these are eukaryotes the dna it lacks histones presence of histone protein is a unique feature of eukaryotes so histone proteins are absent in dinoflagellates organism like goniolax they are red in color when their number increases in oceans it appears to color the entire sea which is called as red tides this could be because of again luminescence property of the organisms that is about dinoflagellates containing two flagellum the next one is euglenoids or euglenophyta example is euglena as you can see in the diagram it's a single celled organism with a long flagellum that is seen it is commonly seen in ponds and lakes the flagella are two in number one would be a long flagella one can be small they have a reddish pigment near their gullet which is called as a eye spot as you can see in the diagram the cell wall is flexible instead of 
the cell wall they have a proteinaceous covering called as the pellicle a protein covering is seen which gives them flexibility they can use their flagella to move towards light to prepare the food reproduction is once again by binary fission sexual reproduction is absent the next phylum is slime molds slime molds these have mold fungus like property as well as slime animal like property so this could be the previous ancestors of both animals as well as fungus the slime molds were previously placed with kingdom fungus but during their reproductive stage they show certain kind of movement motility is seen later they were removed from kingdom fungus and put under kingdom protista the body is amoeba like it is very very flexible whatever comes in its way it just angles it and eats it so phagocytosis is seen during favorable conditions the slime molds they form a cluster or a group of cells which come together which is called as the plasmodium stage this should not be confused with plasmodium that causes malaria so it is a particular stage during their life cycle which is seen during favorable conditions this plasmodium can move therefore it shows certain animal like properties and this plasmodium of course it could be multi nucleate so it's a cluster of many cytoplasms together so there are many nucleus in this structure that is about the slime molds the last phylum in kingdom protista are the protozoans if you look at the word carefully protozoa zoa means zoology animals proto primitive first so this could be the ancestors for the first animals protozoans based on their locomotion protozoa is further divided into amoeboid protozoans ciliated protozoans flagellated protozoans and the non motile sporozoans this is based on their locomotion they show movement with the help of cilia flagella or pseudopodia so these are seen both in aquatic as well as on land these are highly adaptable organisms when there are unfavorable conditions for example amoeba plasmodium they are known to cover themselves with a tough protective covering called as a cyst this cyst will help them to protect against the unfavorable extreme conditions present outside and many organisms belonging to protozoa they may contain food vacuoles contractile vacuoles which will help in locomotion and capturing of food also it helps in maintaining osmosis so these are some of the general characteristics of the phylum protozoans the four types are the amoeboid protozoans example amoeba ciliated protozoans example paramecium flagellated protozoans example leishmania and the sporozoans example the malaria causing parasite plasmodium so mostly they contain parasitic organisms which are known to cause some kind of diseases in animals as well as in human beings so parasitic group that is all about the kingdom protista next we discuss about kingdom fungi kingdom fungi are popularly also called as the molds you can see them growing on the surface of 
bread which is left outside we can also see them as mushrooms yeast that we use in bakery at our homes for cooking all these are examples for kingdom fungi fungi they are multi cellular they have got more than one cell exceptional case is yeast yeast is a unicellular fungus rest all are multi cellular these are eukaryotes of course they have a well defined nucleus and a nuclear membrane dna is present in the form of chromosomes inside the nucleus the fungal body it contains thread like structures called as hypha or plural hyphae if you observe the bread mold which is rhizopus the white covering on the bread if you remove that using a suitable stain if you observe it under the microscope you will find that there are thread like structures everywhere that is the body of the fungus this is called as hyphae many hyphae they come together and it forms a mycelium so what you would be observing under the microscope is a group or a cluster of hyphae called as the mycelium which forms like a mat on the surface the hyphae it could be either branched or unbranched and in the case if it is branched it could have divisions so these divisions are called as septa so the mycelium could be either septate divisions could be there or aseptate the divisions are absent on reaching maturity these mycelia they produce fruiting bodies there are different types of fruiting bodies based on the fruiting body itself the fungus is further classified which we will discuss a little while from now mostly this fungus they are present in moist dark areas they like moisture and their mode of nutrition is saprotrophic meaning they obtain their nutrients directly from the dead and decaying decomposing organic material mushroom for example is found on the dead bark or trunks of trees so these are saprotrophic organisms the mode of reproduction is asexual so with the help of spores sexual reproduction is also seen in the case of fungus in sexual reproduction there is a unique dicaryon phase in the life cycle of the fungus what happens is the two mycelia with their nucleus they come together then the two mycelia they fuse and the cell wall is digested with the help of enzymes if it is septate let us say divisions are present now what you find is that a single cell is containing two nucleus this is what is called as the dicaryon phase so caryon means nucleus later the two nucleus will fuse it will produce the zygote the zygote will undergo meiosis and it will then produce the spores so that is the speciality about the fungal sexual reproduction that is dicaryon phase now based on certain features of the fungus 
the fungus can be studied under four phylum the classification criteria for fungus is the nature of the mycelium whether the mycelium is branched or unbranched and if it is branched whether it has got divisions or not is it septate or aseptate also the nature of the fruiting body fruiting bodies are taken into consideration and does it have a sexually reproductive phase or not based on this four criteria kingdom fungi is further divided into four phylum phyco mycetes asco mycetes basidio mycetes and deuteromycetes so when we discuss this particular portion it is better to have all this four side by side and compare and contrast their features that would be a better way of studying but we will discuss it one by one in detail the first phylum is phycomycetes as you can see these are some of the primitive fungus the lower fungi which means these are very old primitive their hyphae are non septate or aseptate so there are no divisions and they form asexual spores which are called as sporangiospores that is very important these sporangiospores are present in sac like structures called as sporangium sexual reproduction is shown in phycomycetes the sexual spores could be either oospores or zygospores this is how we will discuss all the remaining phylum also their nature of hyphae the type of asexual spore what is the fruiting body called and what is the sexual reproductive spore called as moving on the second phylum ascomycetes they are present in both water as well as on terrestrial habitats they contain the unicellular yeast ascomycetes other than that rest all are multicellular so their size range is complex right from unicellular yeast up to the elaborate cup shaped fungus and morels all are present over here ascomycetes as they are commonly called as the sac fungi because their fruiting body which is called as a ascus is in the form of a sac so they are called as sac fungi the fruiting body is called as ascocarp and inside that they produce the spores asco spores the third phylum is basidio mycetes these include the smuts rusts puff balls and the mushrooms you would have heard about the smut disease the rust disease of wheat etc all these are caused by this basidio mycetes they are called as the club fungi for example mushroom the shape is in the form of a club with the stalk and upper portion that is slightly elaborate so they are called as a club fungi the hypha is divided into septa so these are septate with cross walls the asexual reproductive spores are seen sexual reproduction takes place the fruiting body is called as a 
basidium the basidium inside it produces spores called as basidio spores the last phylum in kingdom fungi that is deuteromycetes deuteromycetes are called as imperfect fungi this is because till now a sexual phase is not being observed in this group of fungus so they do not exhibit any sexual mode of reproduction so they are called as imperfect fungi they are medicinally very important for example penicillium so these are useful for production of drugs and also for producing cheese so food wise and medicine wise the important groups of fungus are seen in this deuteromycetes hyphae is divided into septa so these are septate asexual reproductive spores are seen as i told you sexual reproduction has not been observed for example penicillium fusarium alternaria are examples for deuteromycetes that is about our kingdom fungi now kingdom fungi have got several uses this is usually asked either the characteristics of fungi or the uses of fungi so mainly fungi is used in food for example mushroom morels truffles etc so these are all delicacies so this can be consumed as food fungus are also used for production of antibiotics these are industrially medically very very important fungus are excellent decomposers they are involved in decaying the dead plants and animals along with the bacteria bacteria and fungus they are the decomposers in the ecosystem so they help in nutrient cycling so the nutrients from the dead plants and animals can be decomposed back into the soil so these are a few uses of the kingdom fungus so we have completed discussing about the first three kingdoms kingdom monera that is the bacterial family kingdom protista that contain fungus like and animal like organisms and kingdom fungi now nowhere in the five kingdom classification there is a mention about these four organisms viruses viroids prions and lichens there are a couple of reasons for this one they may be either dead so because of that these are not placed in the classification the another reason could be that they may not contain a proper cell structure so it cannot be considered as a living organism and some of this may be just some abnormal proteins which have the potential to infect other organisms and finally we have the lichens which is a association of two organisms let us discuss them very briefly viruses the word virus it refers to venom or poisonous so virus means poisonous this are non living and they have a crystalline structure you know that viruses they do not survive outside a organism meaning these are obligate parasites they must need a host they definitely require a host without a host these are just crystalline structures if you look at the 
structure of a virus the outer covering of virus mostly consists of a protein cover which is called as the capsid so the outer protein coat is called as the capsid this capsid may be made up of helical or polygonal structures called as capsomeres many capsomeres come together and produce the capsid as you can see in the tobacco mosaic virus diagram the genetic material of the virus inside the capsid the genetic material could be either dna or rna it could be single stranded rna or it could be double stranded rna that is about the viruses viruses are known to cause lot of diseases in plants as well as in animals the tobacco mosaic disease then we have in animals aids mumps measles smallpox hepatitis etc all these are caused by viruses the current corona virus is also an example for virus moving on to viroid it is called viroid because it does not contain the outer protein coat called as the capsid so the protein coat is absent because of which it has a low molecular weight it is smaller than the viruses and it is just a free floating free rna without any capsid or molecular weight this rna can be infectious it is known to infect plants that is about the viroid moving on to the prions prions are unlike viruses they are also similar to viroids but the size of the prion is close to that of a virus no these are also not living organisms they are not organisms in fact they are just a bunch of abnormally folded proteins due to some genetic mutation some proteins they are not folded correctly but they are folded abnormally this can then act as infectious agents these abnormally folded prions proteins can infect other proteins and they can cause them also to become abnormal some of the common diseases caused by prions are the mad cow disease in cattle that is bovine spondyliform encephalopathy and the same disease in human beings is called as the cjd disease that is the Creutzfeldt Jakobson disease both these are neurological disorders known to affect the brain and the nerves so these proteins if they remain in the body they continue to infect other proteins and the neurological condition can worsen this can be killed by proper heat treatment for up to 4 to 6 hours so on treating them with the heat for a continuous period this can be killed these are not organisms therefore they don't find a place in any of the classification finally we come to the lichens it is a symbiotic association of two organisms in this association we find algae which is a plant and we find fungus both of them live very close to each other these lichens can be seen on the barks of trees as light green color surrounded by a white outline that is those are the lichens lichens are excellent indicators of environmental pollution these are not present where the air pollution is more so these are, these are present only in areas where the air is pure so it's an indicator for air pollution the algal component of the lichen is called as phycobiont whereas the fungus component is called as mycobiont fungus means mycology kingdom fungus is also called as kingdom mycota so the algae produces the food with the help of photosynthesis it is autotrophic this food is used by the fungus 
in turn the fungus with the help of its mycelial mat it can absorb water this water can be used by the algae for production of food so both are dependent on each other symbiotically so they are mutually interdependent because it is not one particular organism they don't find any place in the classification that is about our lesson biological classification wherein we have studied robert whitaker's five kingdoms monera protista fungi kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia will be discussed at length in the next two chapters thank you